he didn't show up at a movie set and they didn't fight and he didn't fight his uh, stunt double. So the way that they did it in the movie was a lot more fun. Like the super grind and it just yeah, it's catches oh. on fire. And he blows up at the end. He's like, ah, oh, I didn't get his autograph because there's like coins everywhere. And I love like that he earned like power ups from a video game. Like he earned a one up. Yeah, he got one. What are you life. going? I'm going to get a life. He's like, what are you doing? I'm getting a life, which came in real handy at yeah, the end. Yeah, especially when he was fighting Gideon. Oh yeah. Oh, Jason Schwartzman, such a dick. He love does it. it so well. It was that scene when he's in the limo. Perfectly. When when he's outside after after all that, and then yeah. he's in the limo, and he starts to get in the limo, and he goes, wait. And then he just kind of says something else, and then he goes, let's go, as he jumps back into the limo. Yeah, he's yeah. Ugh, such a pretentious dick. Yeah, I like Roxy. But I have, like, a hard man crush on Mae Whitman for some reason. Don't know why. Huh. You're a very weird man, James. I can't help it, dude. Like, what was Parenthood? She was in Parenthood? Oh, yeah, that TV show? I can't help but picture her as the... Fucking Mary Elizabeth from Perks Being a Wallflower. That's right. She was in. She uh, played Charlie's girlfriend. Because like they they totally she she he went to prom with her and they had sex. He's like I'm so glad you're my boyfriend and he's like what? Yeah and now and then she went leave him alone and then he ended up kissing Emma Watson at the party and yeah yeah and she's also the voice of Katara. She is. I did know that. What? She's the Avatar, voice of Katara the last from Avatar: The Legend of Korra or Katara. But, well, isn't Katara in Legend of Korra? Or but it's she... not Mae Whitman. Yeah, no, it's not. She's Katara from The Last Airbender, and then when she's an old woman, she's in Legend of Korra. Yeah. But just got to a new level of nerd that I am not ready for yet. He it's would good. like Avatar, actually. It's uh, pretty good. I don't think he would. He might like Legend of Korra, because it's more... Sociopolitically based? Yeah. It's less kiddish. Whereas Avatar Last Airbender, they had so many filler episodes, but Legend of Korra just sticks to the... The movie was super good. Shut up. Which one? There's like seven of them. The only live-action one. What? There was not seven Avatar Last Airbender movies. I'm not thinking of Avatar. I'm thinking of... I'm sorry. I'm confusing that with a different anime. Um, yeah. No, don't talk about that travesty. Uh, M. It was Shimano. good. What are you talking about? It might... Shlom and Ding Dong. I think he's rectified himself enough, though, with Split. But anyways, back to Scott Pilgrim. He's got a free pass in Hollywood forever, though. He really does. Always. Always and forever. The I see dead people. Don't pick at it. I'm not. Feel. I'm feeling it. He it's has a awesome. new tattoo. And it's legit. It's like all the lantern It's not symbols. done yet. It's in the shape of a big veiny yeah, dick. A big veiny I was going to let them else. finish it. <laughs> anyways, um, so... Um, like, scale of 1 to 10 how would you rate Scott Pilgrim vs. the world ooh, and not um, even in comparison to other superhero movies because it's nothing like a traditional it's niche it's gonna get marked down because it's niche I'll give it a 7 that's yeah, what I would generous. give it I'd give it a 7 well because I liked it like even though I, I had I liked it too but like even I was not I'm not a part of that niche we watchability it, oh I, I watched it I'm totally stealing from the, the, the streamer's guide to the galaxy right now because they, they do that thing too with rewatchability Oh, I, I could rewatch that movie multiple times and enjoy it every could time. Could you watch it and then watch it again immediately afterwards? I've watched it three times in the past, like, month, so. I probably could, honestly, because it's one of those movies with... Without getting on your phone? Ah! <laughs> I would get on my phone the first time I watched it, though. Let's be real here. That's me. If you, if you had to put your phone down, turn and your re- phone off for four hours, could you sit and watch that movie twice? But the movie isn't... For, oh, um, twice? I don't know. Like, play... And then put it in the rewind machine. Do I get like five minutes for like a piss break? <laughs> oh my god. The VHS. Or is it like a four hour non-stop? You can't take your phone in to pee with you. I wouldn't take my phone in to pee. It'd just be a piss break. Like to go pee. Well yeah, I mean you could pee. Okay. Well then yeah, I could probably do it. As long as I get a pee break. You can't fall asleep either. Otherwise, I wouldn't fall asleep. I don't fall asleep during movies. But. Just saying. I will eat during it. I don't think I could. I liked it. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. I want my kid to see it. Because I think she would think it's really fun. Not like Mystery Men fun, but fun. Oh, yeah. It's... 
I don't know. It's just... it. I mean, yeah, it is niche. It's nothing like any other comic book movie that's out there. That's honestly the truth with it. It's really Which is not. probably one of the reasons why I find it so refreshing right now. Yeah, that's true. It's a much-needed dose of... <sighs> we need Scott Pilgrim vs. the World Part 2. Oh, there... There's not going to be a part two. They I know, didn't. but I'm saying like something like that. Oh, okay. That comes out. Like Knives' Journey or something, which would be amazing. Oh my god, if they did a Knives spinoff, I would be so happy. But okay, so here, here's here's my last thing on that. You remind me of Craig from South Park when you say that. I'm so, so happy. happy. <laughs> um, not that that's a bad thing, though. People, people always feel bad for Knives. And yes, yeah, she's young, but I mean, you got Ramona there. She's playing the overly the woman... attached girlfriend. Is totally what she's playing. Well, yeah, but she's also seventeen. But it's the woman of Scott Pilgrim's dreams. And yes, he probably should have broken it off with her, but he didn't want to hurt. He didn't want to hurt her. So cheating we've on all... her was but, a better yeah, idea. We've all been in that situation. He didn't have really... we. He just they didn't have sex. He just stayed the night in her room and made out with her. Oh, Ramona? Yeah. So? Is it cheating? Yeah. Is even it? even having feelings... If you're in a relationship, or if you're calling someone your girlfriend, and you have emotional feelings for somebody else, that's all cheating. Okay. What? I will remember that you say that. <laughs> uh-huh. He's going to keep that. I'm going to store that away in a locker somewhere. <sighs> And Not, you know exactly. Now I'm just gonna have to watch my ass, make yeah. sure I don't do anything. To but prove watch your right. ass anyway, motherfucker. So anyway, I always do. Nice. And great perky. movie. If you love this stuff that we've been talking about, definitely go check it out. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. Yes. Um, I rented it on Amazon. I know you own it. I own it. He owns it. Um, I rented it on Amazon. It was SD was like two ninety nine or something like that. So. Or if you just want a good read, pick up the book. Yeah, they're expensive though. I mean, to start out with, well, they, like, with if you get piece? the if you get the full color ones, the, if you get the, the paperback, the black color ones, version, that's 69, hardback. Sixty nine nine. It's twenty four ninety nine for the hardcover. I okay. think it's like fourteen ninety nine for the paper. So if you yeah, so I mean they're they're relatively expensive. Meh. You don't get great artwork with it, but you get a fun story. And I'm an artwork kind of guy, typically. Or if the artwork doesn't bother you then you're just really in for it because then it's like sweet right no I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading them but I have so much to read before I can get to that point right um what comes out next guys is that Guardians of the Galaxy yep yeah. that is the next yeah because Guardians it's April so May will be Guardians June and the month after that will be Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman and then the month it, after that Spider-Man Homecoming and then what is it August what's Nothing in August? in August when's Thor Thor's this year. November 3rd. Yeah, it's November. Oh, yeah, because... And then like the Justice week League after? will knock it straight out of freaking all of its box office shit as soon as Justice League comes out <laughs> the week after. Because it's, it's a, uh, isn't Justice League the week after? Yeah, it's the week after my birthday, which is November 8th. And we get Defender Season 1 in September. August, September, yep. So we'll have that to... Uh, kinda... Yeah, I saw August. It's only September eight episodes. Friday, more. Found that out. It's, it's only, only eight? Eight episodes, so Netflix is doing something right. But it also took them... Three months to film eight episodes. What, is, what do you think that means? Well, Charlie Cox said that it usually takes them four months to film 12 for Daredevil. And it took them three months to film eight. So it's mm. kind of on par with what they're doing. Okay. But it, he said it took a little bit longer to film the eight episodes than if they were filming like eight episodes of Daredevil. Because you're also dealing with four distinct characters and four distinct personalities and yeah you can't just kind of flow through the the storyline you have to think about how each character is going to react to react this. to this yeah. he also said in that same interview that he is the only one that will have a costume during boo the so we will not yeah, see iron jessica fist jones or iron fist or luke cage with well i mean luke cage doesn't really need one but jessica think... jones doesn't have one right but iron fist won't have one from what interviews I read with Finn Jones until probably second season, they was when they would do a costume. Because he can't go around doing what he does and be a billionaire. Hey, a quick question. Costumes. At the end of Iron Fist the, the on the Netflix, did they were they still on the mountainside at, Kun, at Kunlun? Yeah. They didn't go back to New York, right? No. No, it ended with them at Kunlun. Or, well, where Kunlun was supposed to be. 
idea, just a thought. Just a thought. What if season two takes place as the return trip, and then at the end of season two is when Defenders, like, chronologically. Well, and then we could get the storyline that's going on in the comics right now. Mm. Him fighting his way back to get his chi and everything else. Well, I'm wondering if, because there's like a gaping hole in that building or whatever, like that the hand is digging in well, New York. Oh, yeah. For Daredevil? Yeah. What if that's where Kun Lun's going? Because the hand wants Kun Lun. Well, they so want to become the seventh the holy city or whatever it is. It's kind of like what the storyline is in the comic, yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of those seven holy cities. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, the hand is going to be the big thing. In well, the yeah, movie, obviously right? from okay. the from the poster. Yeah, because where have it's a hand. hand. Yeah. yeah. Um, All I know so is just, just Sigourney Weaver better make a fucking Ellen Ripley quote just because. Sigourney is she Weaver. in it? Yeah. Sigourney Weaver's the big is the main villain. Ooh, I like that. She's a character named Alexandra. That makes me happy. So she's leading the hand, I guess. Queen of the hand. Clan mother, whatever the hell they're called. Madam Chow. Madam Chow. Madam Chow and Madam Gao. Madam Gao, that's what it was. My bad. My bad. I think that she... I liked her as the main villain for Iron Fist. Like, I wish she would have stayed. Only because... I could have given two shits less about yeah. Harold Meacham. He's fucking annoying. I understand the story arc they chose. Like I know, I know the story arc from the comic books, but Harold Meacham's a fucking asshole, a worthless character. It worked. For yeah, the most part. but it was fun to watch him die. Over and over. I again. actually really liked yeah. Ward. Like Ward, the guy that played Ward did really good. His character arc was probably the one I ended up caring for towards. He the grew end. the most out of all the characters. Yeah. Whereas the sister, the hot sister, regressed the most. Yep. Yeah, they um, flip flopped. They. Totally flip flop. Because going yeah. into that show, you think I'm gonna hate Ward and like her, but then by the end of it, you're like, "Fuck that bitch." No, you think I like Ward and I wanna fuck that bitch. <laughs> and what did I wanna know? Fuck that bitch. This is Russia. And then she's so, uh, making uh, a deal with that salty guy from Kunlun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Oh, uh, Davos. Davos. The Steel Serpent. Mm. So anyway, that brings us to the end of Scott Pilgrim. I and, bet he has a steel and A little bit of... It's, uh, gross. <laughs> Anyways. Um, a little bit of just random talk. Um, Scott Pilgrim, 7 out of 10 from Kalen, 7 out of 10 from Cody. I'm saying like 6.5. So we're all around the same in. page, though, with it. But it's good, man. It's entertaining as hell. Definitely worth a and watch. And it's definitely a change of pace if you want to watch something crazy and out there. Um, if you guys are bored, well, if this is your first time, welcome. You know, go back and listen to us. Uh... Um, but if you're bored and you're looking for something to listen to, and or if you're looking for something to watch on TV, I definitely recommend that you go and check out A Streamer's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, Devin and Lauren, yes? Sorry. Is it Laura? Lauren. 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 Lauren, yeah. Anyway, they, oh, husband and wife, and basically what they are doing is they are going through these shows and watching them so that you don't have to, and they are tackling shows like The 100, um, the British baking... The Great British Bake Off. Yeah. And so they watch these shows, they review them, um, they give you kind of a spoiler warning and stuff, and it's a lot of fun. And I definitely recommend that you guys go over there, check it out, leave them a rating. Um, show some love, man. Show some love. But next week, what are we doing? Rogue One. We're back, Ooh. we're back to our roots. We're back to current movies. And we're gonna talk some Star Wars next week, and we're gonna... I think that we should all write four-page papers comparing and contrasting Rogue One to A New Hope. You mean that yeah, upcoming that. sequel directed by George Lucas? Yes. I hear a synopsis is out there somewhere. A yeah. fan film. A fan film. Sequel uh, to A New Hope. It's made by Mel Brooks, I believe. Is it Mel Brooks? I think so. Mm. stars Rick Moranis. Some guys are fucking Rick idiots. <laughs> it's... it's <laughs> Probably the best parody film ever made. Where the white woman at? <laughs> what? That was from Blazing Saddles. Yes, and Star Wars: A New Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta do some crossover, man. Anyway, join us next week for <laughs> Rogue One. I am James. I am Cody, and I'm Kalen. And we will see you guys. Oh, I said it wrong. It was I was talking about The Force Awakens. God, I'm stupid. We'll see you guys next week.